Livin' Life's stay in Placencia was short. One of those northers I'd mentioned in the last video was expected to arrive soon. So we decided to head north to a safe haven, Sapadilla Lagoon. Our friends on the Cuesto and Lanyap buddy-boated with us. And we all arrived in a quiet, still, fully protected lagoon. So still, the water was perfectly reflective, making love to the camera. We were amazed how sheltered it truly was from the stormy weather. Dave hoped the storm would bring enough wind to kiteboard. It had been a year since he last kited and he itched to go. He gave it his best shot, but the wind was dirty and gusty and not conducive to kiting. When I say dirty, I mean the trees block the path of the wind, making it irregular and unreliable. After the storm passed, we gathered to discuss the best Belize has to offer cruisers for anchorages, snorkeling, and beautiful scenery. We heard that yet another norther was coming, so we decided to stay put until we felt secure leaving. Dana on Vita Libre wanted to make tracks north to Key Cocker and took her chances leaving the lagoon, only to find out just how protected the lagoon is. The wind and waves proved too uncomfortable for her crew. So Dana turned the boat around and returned to the lagoon. Therefore, we decided to explore the area. There's a top-notch marina called the Marina at the Reserve and a community called the Reserve or the Sanctuary, Belize. The marina and its immediate grounds are beautiful. There is a maze of a canal system winding its way through the mangroves and strangely empty land. We were invited to the beach club and we found it after only a few tries. The small expat community that lived there hung out at the beach club, which boasted a beautiful pool, a bar with a friendly bartender, and a restaurant with good food. The expats were very welcoming and appeared to be excited to have newcomers visit. As we chatted, we learned more about the sanctuary and its strangely empty marina and ghost town of a store and restaurant surrounded by empty lots and a sprinkling of custom-built homes. The Sanctuary is a huge development project by an American-based company that promised a luxury development with a hospital staffed with American doctors, an emergency medical center in a downtown marina village with luxury hotels and fine restaurants, a casino, a championship-caliber golf course, and a new international airport with direct flights to the U.S. If you buy in during the build-out stage, the new amenities would triple your investment in two to three years. It sounds amazing! Dave and I are always looking for our paradise to retire to after cruising. Who wouldn't want to buy in? We certainly would consider here. Everyone loves living in paradise, and the dream of owning a vacation home or retirement property in the natural beauty of a tropical location can now be yours with Buy Belize. A massive advertising campaign launched in 2015 with infomercials, commercials on Bloomberg News and Fox News. Yahoo Finance ran an article saying Sanctuary Belize was a great option to retirees being an English-speaking country with lower taxes than many democratic nations and an incentive program to retirees relocating to Belize. I believe in the stability of Belize so much that I offer nearly 100% financing to prospective buyers. Say that again, nearly 100% financing. Our confidence in what we are doing has allowed our private equity to support our lending program. This means anyone buying a property in our developments can avoid going through the hassles of a traditional bank, and they can make a very low down payment to secure the property. From an investment perspective, you can get in with very little money down, make payments, watch the property appreciate, and resell the property sometime in the future. 
Yahoo Finance reported that the community would boast at least 1,700 home sites and condos on 14,000 acres that feature forest, river, pristine beach and rainforest, all within a vast wildlife preserve on the southeastern coastline of Belize. The Sanctuary Belize was even featured in the House Hunters Caribbean Life TV show as one of three options to a buyer. This couple did decide to purchase a lot at the sanctuary. And why not, when they could build their dream home in an incredible up-and-coming luxury community? Sanctuary Belize is about one hour north of the Placencia Peninsula. When completed, the community will include an equestrian center and marina. It's also close to the Belize Barrier Reef and a 10,000 acre wildlife reserve. This is Sanctuary Belize. The price for this lot is 229,000. Ooh. Okay. Wow. I knew you'd like that. It gives you plenty of room to build exactly what you want. This development will be under construction for a few years. However, I think that you would be very happy here. Sanctuary Belize fulfills everything that I'm looking for because I'm making it. I would have to say that the budget is right where we need it to be, but there is no house. Where is the house? Show me the house. Buyers came in and purchased lots for between $150,000 and $500,000 U.S. Plus, they would need to pay monthly HOA fees for all those amenities. But for these buyers, their retirement dreams turned into nightmares. The person orchestrating the sanctuary development, Andres Pook, is a convicted felon who had been sued by the FTC for consumer fraud in connection with a debt counseling scheme. Pook ultimately agreed to forfeit millions of dollars in assets that could be used to refund money to victims. James Combe, director of the FTC's Consumer Protection Enforcement Division, called Pook a hardcore serial scammer who perpetrated the Sanctuary Belize scheme even while serving an 18-month prison sentence for obstruction of justice. As the money rolled in from the parcel sales, it was supposed to finance the construction of the promised amenities, but instead finance Pook's bail and Newport Beach, California home. People owned the lots, but nothing was built to increase the value of the property or even to make their retirement enjoyable. When buyers ask for the developers to buy back their lots or they stop making payments, the developers refuse refunds and resell the lots to new buyers. The FTC has shut down the operation, claiming it is the biggest overseas real estate investment scam it has ever investigated. Now it is all a big mess. Tied up in the federal court system in the U.S., lot owners don't know if they should continue making payments or who to. Everything has been frozen. Building was halted, leaving some people with lots they cannot build on. Assets were frozen, leaving people who built rental units unable to rent them out. The sanctuary is undoubtedly a beautiful place with an enormous amount of potential. It's too bad they didn't follow through with even half or a quarter of what they claimed. The future of the lots, their owners, and any renewed development is still unknown. We're happy to have visited this strange ghost town community. The lagoon is safe and secure from weather and is so picturesque. Also, on the night of the full moon, there was more bioluminescence in the water than I've ever seen anywhere, like straight out of the movie The Life of Pi. But the second norther petered out and it was time to move north towards Key Cocker.
Uh-oh. What happened there? <laughs>